Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellows and girls, Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice have a special offer for you right now. Yes, the swell-tasting breakfast cereals shot from guns are making one of the most remarkable offers you've ever heard about. We can't guarantee how much longer it'll last, but while it does, just listen to this. You can have for your very own a new official Challenge of the Yukon secret two-way signal flashlight. That's a real flashlight. But mind you, it's no ordinary flashlight. It's two-way. This amazing invention sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. And it does it with a simple flick of your finger. Man, oh man, have you ever heard of anything like it? Anything to beat it for sending secret codes and messages. You'll want to send for yours tonight. Listen for full details in just a few minutes. Summer had come to Forty Mile, and with it had come a series of happenings that kept the townspeople in a continuous state of tension. The first of these happenings had taken place early one evening a few weeks before. Uh, it's sure good to see Summer again. Yep. I hope to make a find at that claim of mine before winter comes again. Been a lot of strikes up that way lately. Well, I sure wish you luck. Like I said, it. Hey, what was that? Came from up the street. Let's go see. Here, come on. It was a week later when the same gang struck at the express office in Forty Mile. Well, what can I do? Hey, those handkerchiefs you got in your faces. You must be thieves. Shut up and stay where you are. Frank, get the stuff out of the safe and hurry. All right. No, we'll let you out of the safe. This will shut you up, mister. Oh! Ready, Frank? I got the stuff. Let's get out of here. And the crook seemed to know when an old prospector left Forty Mile with his take. Get along there, you ornery mule. Get up there. Get along there. Get up there. Oh, oh, oh. All right, give us the gold you carry, you pup. Crooks by thunder. Now see here. You heard what he said? Yeah. We know you got a lot of gold with you. Drag him off that mule, Frank. Yeah. Steady there, boy. Come on. Get off of there. Wait, stop. You can't do this to me. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Bring the mule, Frank. The gold must be in them saddlebags. Here. You lead the mule. All right. Now, get out of your horse and let's get away from here. Steady, boy. I'm ready. No, come back. Don't leave me here. Get out there. Come on. Judd Kemper, owner of the cafe and the bank in 40 Mile, called a meeting of the leading townsmen at the trading post, which was attended by Constable Bill Brooks of the Northwest Mounted Police. Now, uh, men, I call this meeting because something has to be done about the gang of crooks operating around 40 Mile here. They got 30000 from the bank a few weeks ago. Next, they cleaned out the express office safe. Then, a couple of days ago, they robbed that old prospector of all he had on the trail of Dawson City. So far, they've got away with it. What you say is true, Mr. Kemper, and I'm doing all I can to get a line on them. They seem to have a very smart leader. They're liable to hit again. Sure, they got to be stopped. Yeah, now, wait, wait. Quiet, quiet down, man. Constable, I know you represent the law here in 40 Mile, but so far you haven't been able to cope with that gang, as you just admitted. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And unless you do something and do it soon, we're going to have to get together for our own protection. 
The whole town's upset over what's been taking place. That gang will be caught sooner or later, Mr. Kemper. But forming into a vigilante's committee isn't the way to do it. You have to leave it to the law. Well, we, uh, we're willing to have the law act, Constable. If it does act. But the bank can't stand any more losses. I never know when those crooks might strike at the cafe. Now, if you've decided on a plan, we'd like to hear it. But if you haven't, yes, I... Oh, well, yeah. oh, look, man, look. I... I admit I can't handle this alone, and I don't intend to. I've sent to Dawson City for help. Uh-huh. Just how many Mounties do you expect them to send here, Constable? Frankly, I've asked for only one. One? Oh, I see. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute until I explain, man. The man I asked for is the best Mountie in our organization. Sergeant Preston. But, Sergeant Preston, eh? Yes, I've heard of him. I know he has quite a reputation, too, but I doubt that even having him to work with you will be much help against that clever gang. Well, let's wait and see. Before you men decide to take matters into your own hands, wait and give us a chance. What do you say? Well, I hear Preston's mighty good. Yeah. We better give him a chance to see what they can do. Well, so all, right, we'll all right, Constable. The men seem to agree to... Wait for you and Sergeant Preston to catch that gang of crooks. But I warn you, if you don't do it soon, we'll get together and try to run them down by ourselves, in spite of anything you say. Late that night, Judd Kemper was talking to a visitor in his private office at the cafe. Well, Jake, so far we've gotten away with things. But the constable sent for somebody who might make it hot for all of us, if he gets to 40 miles. Yeah? Who's that, Judd? He sent to Dawson City for that Mountie, Sergeant Preston. I guess you've heard of him. Preston? Yeah, I have heard of him. Having him come here and get on our trail isn't good at all. Yeah, I know. He's clever and persistent when he gets set to catch anyone. What are we going to do? It's one thing you can do. That is to make sure he doesn't get to 40 Mile. What do you mean? Don't act stupid, Jake. He's most likely on his way from Dawson right now. Go out of ways with Frank and pick a good spot from which you can shoot him from ambush. Well, that's risky business, Judd, killing a Marty. Especially one as well known as Preston. Uh, if you're careful, there's no risk. It's him or us, just remember that. Well, there's one more thing, Judd, that maybe you don't know. What are you talking about? That dog of his. Dog? <laughs> What's a dog got to do with it? I can see you haven't heard about that big dog of Preston's. He's got a train so that it's almost human the way it tracks down somebody. That dog would be after us the minute he heard a shot. Uh, and use your head. Make sure there's swampy muskeg between the place you shoot from and the trail. Even a dog couldn't get through that stuff. Yeah. Hey, that's a good idea. I know just about the right spot, too. All right, Judd. You can leave it to Frank and me. We'll lay and wait for that money to come along the trail. Then we'll let him have it. But you can bet I'll make sure there's plenty of soft, deep muskeg between the trail and the place we got him down from. Leaving Judd's office, Jake went out into the cafe and found his friend Frank sitting alone at a corner table. Jake drew out a chair and sat down. I got some news for you, Frank. Yeah, what? Keep your voice down. Don't want anyone to hear what we're talking about. All right, go ahead and tell me what the boss wanted to see you about. Amani's coming here from Dawson City to do some investigating. Well, what about it? The constable's a member of the Amani's, and he hasn't been able to do anything. Sure, I know. But the one who was coming here is different. You see, the constable sent for Sergeant Preston. Hey, he's the one that has that big dog with him all the time, isn't he? Yep, that's him, all right. Now, what's the boss going to do? From what I hear of Sergeant Preston and that dog is, we're liable to end up in plenty of trouble. You and I are going to make sure Preston doesn't get here, Frank. Ah, now, wait a minute. If you think I'm going to try to buck up against Preston and that dog, you better think again. <laughs> Come in the back room, Frank. After you hear the plan Judd has for getting rid of that money in spite of his dog, you'll give him credit for being plenty smart. Come on. That same night, Sergeant Preston brought his horse to a stop in front of the Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City. Oh, there. Easy now. One king. Hello, Sergeant. Inspector's waiting to see you. He's in his office now. Just got his message. I'll go right in. Wait here, King. Well, Sergeant, I'm sorry to rouse you out at this hour. I know it must be important, Inspector. It is very important. 
Oh, uh, sit down, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. What's up? Plenty. An Eskimo came in with a message from Constable Brooks at 40 Mile. He needs help as soon as he can get it. What's happened up there? Clever game of crooks are at work in that vicinity. They seem to know when and where to hit to get plenty of gold. I see. According to the message from Brooks, they hit the bank when a large amount of gold ready for transfer was in his vault. Then when the express office had a gold shipment in the safe, they struck there. That is serious. That isn't all, Sergeant. They seem to know when a prospector leaves town with the take from his claim. They robbed one on the way to Dawson City. Well, sir, I'd say someone in town was a member of that gang. That's the way it seems to me, Sergeant. But Brooks hasn't been able to get a line on the gang at all. He sent a request for help. In fact, he asked for you to come there. We'll do all we can to track down the gang, sir. I want you to go all right, Sergeant. If you don't, Brooks may have trouble with the townsmen. They want to take the matter in their own hands. I see. We can't let that sort of thing start in the Yukon. That's right, Sergeant. Uh, when can you start? King and I can start right away. The sooner we get up there, the better. That's fine. And good luck, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. We'll do the best we can. All the rest of the night and through the next day, Sergeant Preston, with King running alongside, rode the trail toward 40 Mile. The next evening, he was a few miles from the town, riding at a leisurely pace to rest his horse and dog. Well, King, won't be long before we reach 40 miles. We can all do with a good meal and a bit of rest, eh, fella? Come on, man. Just as Sergeant Preston urged his horse into a faster pace, a distant rifle shot rang out. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Fellas and girls, suppose, just suppose that you happen to be in a tight spot. You're outside, alone, and it's pitch dark. You need help. You need to get a message through to your friends. Now, you don't want to holler out. That might give you away to some stranger. Well, supposing you were in a spot like that, what would you do? Fellas and girls, it'd be a cinch to get a message through safely if you owned one of our terrific new official Challenge of the Yukon two-way signal flashlight. It's a special kind of flashlight. A real flashlight that's two-way. That is, it sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. Yes, this amazing flashlight flashes red and it flashes green. It works with a simple flick of your finger. And it works much like blinker signal guns used by the Army and Navy. Yes, this secret signal flashlight has a special plastic directional signal barrel. That's to prevent strangers or outsiders from detecting your secret signal flashes. In other words, your signals can be seen only by the person at whom they're aimed. Can you imagine anything more wonderful for sending messages? You can work out secret codes with your friends. For instance, three green flashes might mean help, come at once. Or two red flashes and one green might mean danger, proceed with caution. What's more, you can carry your two-way signal flashlight anywhere without anyone being the wiser. That's because it's pocket size. It fits snugly in your pocket. And your new official challenge of the Yukon signal flashlight is keen looking too. All shiny black. And across the side is Sergeant Preston's name in his own handwriting. What's more, it comes complete with standard replaceable electric bulb and battery. It's the real McCoy. Now, here's the only way to get one. Simply send 25 cents in coin. Think of it. Only 25 cents plus one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. See, those are swell taste and breakfast cereals shot from guns. Ask Mom to buy delicious wheat or rice shot from guns and send it once for your official two-way signal flashlight. It's not on sale in stores anywhere. So send one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice together with 25 cents and your name and address plainly printed on a piece of paper. Mail to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. But hurry and write down that address now. It's Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. Now to continue our story. On his way to 40 miles, Sergeant Preston was just a few miles from the town when a distant shot was heard, and the Mountie, with a cry, fell from the saddle to the soft earth of the trail. A short distance away, 
Jake and Frank looked cautiously over the top of the ridge behind which they had been hiding. I hit him, Frank. He's lying on the trail and not moving. I guess you really got him. That big dog's looking this way and acting almost crazy. If it wasn't for all that swampy muskeg between here and there... Don't worry, there's no way he can get to us. Come on, let's mount and ride away from here. Stay steady there, Morty. Get up, get up, get up. For a few minutes after the two gunmen rode away, Sergeant Preston lay without moving. And then slowly he pushed himself to his elbows. It's all right, fellow. Seems to be just a crease across the back of my head. Stunned me for a minute. The way you're looking over there to Ridge, I guess the shot came from there, right there. That musk egg kept you from getting to them. They planned their ambush for you. I'll be all right now, fella. Have to keep our eyes open from here on into town, though. Steady now. We'll try to get to Brooks' cabin without being seen. They think they killed me, so much the better. Let's go, King. Get up there. A short time later, Jake and Frank rode up to the back door of the cafe. Oh, 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 That'll be waiting for the news. Yeah, I know. Well, you got back sooner than I expected. How'd you make out? Judd, your worries about Sergeant Preston are over. You mean you... Yep. We went to that place along the trail I mentioned and waited a while. Then he came along on his horse with that big dog trotting alongside. Did he uh, fight back? I mean, did you manage to... One bullet did. It took him right out of the saddle. He's lying up there on the trail right now, dead. Guess somebody will come along and find his body before morning. <laughs> Good work, Jay. Good work. That big dog of Preston's was carrying on something awful when we rode away. Good thing he couldn't get to us. He'd have torn us apart. Well, we don't have to worry about either Preston or the dog now. Uh, you better both get out in the cafe before somebody starts asking for you. All right. Come on, Frank. See you later, Jed. Uh, if anyone comes in and reports about Sergeant Preston, let me know, Jake. Yeah, sure. Sergeant Preston managed to reach Constable Brooks' cabin on the edge of town without anyone being seen. After having food and rest, two Mounties sat down to discuss the situation. Now, Bill, who knew I was coming to 40 Mile? Practically everyone, Sergeant. You see, they had a meeting, and I told them I'd sent for you. I see. Whoever shot at me thinks I'm done for. They couldn't get to me to make sure because of the musk egg. That's the reason King couldn't go after them. I must have been lying there stunned for several minutes. You think someone in town is behind this gang? Looks that way to me, Bill. That someone is in a position to know everything that goes on here. Well, that could apply to a good many. Things aren't kept very secret around town. Practically everyone discusses his business in the cafe. I see. Look, Bill, uh... Suppose I stay here undercover for a while. You go to the cafe and keep your ears open. Someone might drop a remark that would give us a line on the man who shot me. All right, Sergeant. I'll go over there right now. See you later, Sergeant. It was over an hour later when the constable returned to the cabin where Sergeant Preston was waiting with King. Well, Bill, anything happened at the cafe while you were there? Something was said that might mean a lead, Sergeant. Huh? Tell me about it. Well, I... I went into the cafe. A man named Jake, who does part-time barkeeping there, started a conversation with me. Well, Constable, when's that Mountie coming here from Dawson? The one that has the big dog with him all the time. Sergeant Preston? Yeah, that's the one I heard you were going to have come here. To tell the truth, I've been expecting him all afternoon. Maybe he's not even coming. He might be away from Dawson City, you know. Oh, I... I would have been notified, or they'd at least send someone else in that case. If that gang sees him on a trail, they're liable to waylay him. You never can tell. Sergeant Preston can take care of himself. Like you said, he has that big dog with him. Hey, uh, Jake, you just let the constable do his own worrying. That Mountie's coming from Dawson. He'll get here sooner or later. He'll get busy with the customers. Oh, yeah, sure, Mr. Kemper. I was just interested like everybody else, that's all. That fellow Jake seemed interested in whether I'd get here or not, eh? That's right, Sergeant. And Judd Kemper, the owner of the cafe in the bank, came up and told Jake to get busy. He didn't seem to want Jake talking. Hmm. 
That's worth thinking about. As owner of the cafe and of the bank, Kemper would be in a position to... Bill, do you think you could get the express clerk to cooperate with him? Yes. I'm sure he would. Good. I'll tell you about my plan. And I want you to go talk to the express clerk and have him do and say exactly what I tell you. After listening to Sergeant Preston's plan, the constable went to the express office carrying two small sacks, such as prospectors use to transport gold. A short time later, the express clerk entered the cafe and approached Jake. Well, it's that shoulder wound of yours coming along, Bob. That's all right. It's almost healed up by now. Lucky that gang didn't gun you down for good. That's right. Uh, looking for the constable. Have you seen him? He was in here about an hour ago. Haven't seen him since. <laughs> Guess he rode off to do some snooping around after that gang he's after. Hey, what's up? You look worried. Oh, uh, nothing much. Uh, I'm going home to get something to eat. If the constable comes in here, uh, ask him to wait around till I come back on the way to the express office, will you? Well, sure, I'll tell him. Uh, haven't got a line on that gang, have you? The one that robbed you? No. Only I don't want to be robbed again, that's all. Uh, I'll be back in about an hour or so. Uh, guess I'd better talk to Kemper. Yes, come in. What's up, Jake? The express clerk was just in looking for the constable. What for? He wouldn't say. He's on the way to his cabin to eat. Be gone about an hour, he said. Well? I got an idea from the way he talked that he's got another shipment of gold down there in that old safe at the express office. Hmm, I wonder. I'll get Frank and Joe to come in here and wait here. It's a chance I didn't expect so soon. About 20 minutes later, Sergeant Preston, with King and the constable, waited in hiding behind the woodshed in back of the express office. Finally, they heard hoofbeats coming along the back way. Quiet, fella, quiet. There they come. They're wearing handkerchief masks like the gang is said to wear. Yes, Bill. I'll just watch and keep quiet. Oh, hold on. Oh. Frank, you come in with me. All right. Joe, you stay here and watch for anyone coming. Gotcha. Let's go. He's a king. From their hiding place, the two men and King watched as the men forced the back door and entered the express office. King looked expectantly at Sergeant Preston, but the Mountie gave no order or signal to attack, so the great dog waited, tense but quiet. After several minutes had elapsed, the crooks left the express office carrying the two sacks. Oh, my hunch was a good one, all right. Let's get away from here, quick. Oh, you steady there, boy. Get up, get up. Get up. There they go. Let's get to our horses, Bill. Right. I couldn't see the horses from the side of the building. Follow them down. I hope we get them with their leaders. Steady there, fellas. After them, gang. Come on, now. A few minutes later, Preston and the other Mountie pulled rain a short distance from the back door of the cafe. Oh, no. Oh, easy. Those are the horses they rode, all right. And King slipped at the back door. Yeah. Now what, Sergeant? You go around the front and enter the cafe. Try to make your way unobserved to the office door and keep your gun handy. All right. What about you and King? We'll go to the back door. When you hear a commotion, go in, ready for trouble. Get going, Bill. All right, Sergeant. Waiting until the constable had had time to get into the cafe from the front, Sergeant Preston cautiously approached the back door, and warning King to be quiet, he stood listening. Meantime, inside, Jake and the others were talking to Judd Kemper. It was just like I said, Mr. Kemper. If those two sacks of gold there on your desk were in the safe ready to be shipped. Are you sure nobody saw you coming in here? Nobody saw us at all, boss. We made sure of that. We can go out front again and nobody can prove we ever left the cafe. Yeah, that's right. It was the easiest job we ever pulled, Mr. Kemper. <laughs> that express clerk's going to be surprised when he goes to get that gold out. Yeah. Uh, say, how about uh, giving us our split right now, Mr. Kemper? What's more, I... Uh... I think we should get more of a share than we've been getting. Yeah, Jake's right, we should. We take all the chances and you grab most of the tape. Now, listen to me, you greedy fools. You'll take what I give you and that's all. I'm the one who figures out the jobs and gets the load on where you can get plenty of gold. Now, quiet down. No use raising your voice. And don't come in here whining about what you get. 
I'll give you the share you're to get from this job right now. Here. Say, what's this? Hey, what's the matter? Yeah, what's wrong? Look at what's in this sack. Wait, look. Oh, look Holy at that. smoke. Hey. Filled with little stones and dirt. Hey, let me see that other sack. Hey, this one's filled the same way. We've been fooled. Oh, no, I've been fooled. Now, where's the gold you got at the express office? Where is it? I see you. Take it easy. Those are the sacks we found there in the safe. We brought them straight here. That's right. That's a lie. You substituted these for the ones you stole from the safe. The express clerk wouldn't want the constable to help guard a couple of sacks of dirt and pebbles. Take it easy. You're the one who always told us what to do. You told us how to get that money, Preston, in spite of his dog, too. I have a good mind to turn you all in as the gang. To tell them you murdered Preston. Why, Someone's hey. bound to find his body before the night's over. This Wait, gun God. says you'll come across with the two sacks of gold. Never drop that gun. And the money. Preston. I'll get you, Preston. Oh, you don't? Oh! Hey, you heard us talking. Shoot him. Get him, King! Even as Jake went for his gun, the great dog King lunged forward like a gray streak of lightning, grabbing his gun arm and knocking him off his feet. Help, George! Get away! Don't Jing Jing. Jing. I'll take this one, Sergeant! Go! Oh. I'm getting out of here! Not so fast, Joe! Oh. I give up! I give up, Preston! Oh, Easy, me. King! My right, boy! Well, Sergeant, your plan works. My arm, I... I don't understand. Sergeant Preston's wise, Kemper. After he was shot at, he came into town secretly. He guessed somebody here was leader of the gang, and he planted those bags of dirt at the express office. Then we sent the express clerk in to talk to Jake. Yeah, Jake was a fool to be taken in by him. You're the fool, Camper, to think you could get away with your robberies and killings. I'm sure the constable overheard what was said in here. That's right, I did, Kemper planned everything. He's the one who even planned shooting you on the trail. We know all about it now. Kemper even had you rob his own bank, taking the money that belonged to the townspeople. Now they'll get it all back. Sergeant, I I knew if you came here, you and King would find this gang. I'm glad we could help, Bill. Now, as far as King and I are concerned, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Fellas and girls, remember, you can have one of our wonderful new official Challenge of the Yukon two-way signal flashlights. That's the amazing special kind of flashlight. A real flashlight that sends off beams of red light or beams of green light. It's out of this world for sending secret codes and messages. But please keep this in mind so you won't be disappointed. We've only a very limited supply. Send tonight. Mail 25 cents. That's just one quarter and one box top from delicious Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice. Include your name and address and send to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. The address is Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Music Hall Murder. Trigger Bill Desmond was probably the best shot in the territory. And it was because of that that he was accused of murder. It was a good thing for King and me that we were able to clear him because it was Trigger Bill Desmond's sharpshooting that saved both our lives. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.